Oh, happy day. I hope you're doing good. Here we are. You guys, it's Friday. Did you finish? Did you finish where you wanted to finish in this week? Okay, I hope you did. I'm gonna talk to you about some nuances of telesales as well as sales in general. But we're gonna talk about what happens when you get gassed, okay? And I'm talking about not the gas in a fireplace, I'm talking about the gas of life, the gas of getting tanked, the gas of losing your energy, okay? This week, this very week, I did 14 sales for $10,387 in AP, and it was accomplished in 26 hours. Now, let me tell you, I'm gassed, okay? I'm done. Been a good week. By some, maybe a great week. <sighs> but you ever get just poop? Have you ever been in a career where you love what you do? But there's two pains, okay? There's the pains of having, and there's the pains of not having, okay? I'm telling you, you've got the pain of working really hard, like what I did. I did a ton of consulting this week. I did a ton of work with my agents and my agency helping them working on things that didn't look like the normal telespace work, but yet I did not let it become an excuse for failure. I'm telling you, there's an easy way and a hard way, and the hard way will give you good success. It will give you the best chance, okay, at least the best chance of success. Lord willing, it gives you good success, but it'll give you hopefully the best chance to succeed and dominate in your space. I don't like leading from behind, so I had to put some extra elbow grease in it, but I didn't do it via hours. It just worked. I just muscled through. You don't always feel like doing the most important thing at every given moment. You won't always feel, okay? Feelings are something that'll just mess you up. You gotta focus on what's the most important thing. Today, I did a buttload of service work, a ton of it, okay? I was on the phone with carriers, calling different clients, making sure, hey, you, something happened with your billing here and there. They're like, thanks for calling. I was babysitting, okay? I was I was playing four hours plus of babysitting. Sometimes this is what you do. That's what the career really looks like. Sometimes you're gonna be gassed, man. If you get to the end of your Friday and you're just whooped, guess what? That's what the weekend's for. Recharge, rejuvenate, get yourself back so that when Monday hits and that bell strikes, you're ready to go to war. Now, when you are on the phone, okay, you need to be doing the same thing all the time, following good power scripts, you need to be having good rebuttals, and you've got to focus on what's most important with that client. When you're on the phone or in the face-to-face -face realm, I train on both, but I'm telling you, when you do face-to-face -face sales, it's important for what? That the product is affordable. Okay? You need to have affordable solutions to meet your client's needs. In the telesales space, it's even more paramount. If you are just pitching product, you won't last long. This isn't about product. This is meeting a need. Okay, If you meet a need, you're an order taker. You need to develop the right to be able to speak to that consumer in a way that they're going to listen to you. And they're going to listen to you because they know that you're guiding them in a budget-friendly manner. If they know that you care about their budget and they know they care about, okay, they know that you care about getting the right solution in place to meet whatever that need is, you're gonna have a client that will bend their ear to you, okay? Because they know you truly care. If you come in like some peddler, okay, selling cold meat out of the back of a Toyota or a van somewhere door to door, come on. Nobody likes that guy. Don't be like the meat delivery guy, the meat salesman, the shoe salesman, the encyclopedia salesman. Those aren't bad people. Okay, I'm sorry if you had good people come to your door. Nothing against them, but you know what I'm saying. Those people are just pitching product. Come buy my product, come buy my product, come buy my product. The life insurance market, it's not about pitching a product. It's using that product to meet the need of the consumer in the most holistic fashion, in the best way possible, so that the consumer understands how you're serving them. They're actually thanking you when they're done for helping them and meeting that need, okay? If you're in a space where you're talking to a client about, oh boy, forgive me you guys, I'm not as eloquent tonight, I'm smoked, okay? But when, and by the way, not what's legal, I'm talking about like exhausted smoke, let's just put that out there for some of you people that enjoy certain things. All right, I'm drinking tea. But I'm just saying, when you talk to a consumer and you step into that place where 
They go, I want more death benefit. I'm looking at term insurance. I'm a whole life guy. I sell term only for younger people. You got to relate it, okay, when you speak to a client in ways that resonate with them. You need to have word pictures. Like if I have someone that comes and says, listen, I don't want whole life. I can't buy as much insurance. I'm going to buy term. And this person's in their 60s, 70s. Oh my goodness. A term product is the wrong product for them. You need to step across the table, step across the phone and speak to their heart, speak to their need. Help them understand that term insurance is temporary. It's temporary in nature. The policy in and of itself, term stands for terminate, it means it goes away. It expires like milk, okay? You need to have word pictures. Term insurance expires like bad milk in the fridge. It's good at first, okay? It'll meet your needs at first, but it's gonna leave you not real happy. You ever play hot potato when you were a child? I played hot potato. It's kind of a fun game. That's what you're doing with term insurance. Would you rather have a whole life solution where it's a guaranteed rate lock, guaranteed death benefit, and nothing moves? Or would you rather have the hot potato game of the term world? You're going to love me now, but Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, you are going to hate me in 10 years when this thing expires. And trust me, they will. In 10 years, they're not going to remember that you told them that the rates are going to spike. They're going to skyrocket, okay, going from... 80 bucks a month that they can afford to a thousand dollars that they can't afford every month goodness they're gonna hate you you're off the christmas list let me tell you so you gotta help them understand that listen it's a short-term product it's a termed product i'm talking to you about a whole life product with a guaranteed rate lock with a guaranteed death benefit you only have to buy this thing once do you want to buy this again you really don't want to have to buy this product again when you're older and not as healthy do you I mean, most people as we age, even myself, do we get healthier as we age? I hope you guys do. Let me tell you, I don't heal as fast. When I work out, when I do work out, let me tell you, I hurt three days later. I used to never hurt three days later, right? Our bodies over time typically don't get healthier, faster, leaner, meaner. Some people do. My body's not wired that way, all right? So you really got to relate what you're speaking to the client. You've got to get that message across. The better that you are about meeting that client's needs, the better that you are about relating to the consumer and just being honest with them. Be honest with your consumer. Help them understand what you do and why you do it. Help them understand why you choose not to serve them with certain products, certain product offerings. I refuse to sell certain products. But listen, if you want a temporary product, I'm not your guy. You should probably get this from another agent that just wants a sale out of you. I want a client out of you. I want you to love me now and love me in the future. And I won't put a product in place that's gonna cause you to not be a real fan of me in the future, okay? I just won't do it. And if I do it, I'll do it under duress, okay? I'll, I'll get a piece of paper and write out that says, I, Mr. Johnson, understand that my agent told me this product was not the best thing for me and I wanted it anyway. And I understand that my rates are gonna spike insanely high and he showed me that they're going from a hundred bucks to let's say a thousand dollars a month at the end of this 10 year term and i'm okay with it and i've chosen this and i have them sign it and i put it in my file because in 10 years you may have to pull it out because they'll forget okay so make sure you just do what's right by the client but let them know that you are so passionate and so in the moment for them they will understand when you have their true best interest at heart they will understand what you're doing for them you are looking out for their families, their legacies. You're taking care of their cremation needs, their burial needs, but you're looking at it holistically. You're not just short time it just to get a sale. You guys quit figuring that I just need to get this sale and be done, okay? Do that, get your sale, but keep that client. Follow up, follow up with them. Do service work like I did today. It's not always fun. I'm tapped, okay? I had a long week. I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight, but I would rather have the pain okay of working hard and being successful than having the pain of being lazy the pain of being complacent and the pain of the pain of not being skilled up i can really talk tonight sorry you guys it is what it is but i hope you guys have a great weekend i hope this brings some form of value to you if you've got ideas put them in the comments i'll try to get to you i'll try to do some more content when i recharge my own batteries a little bit but i gave everything i had this week i wanted my 15 I did 26 hours of work on the phone myself, and I settled at 14. Maybe I'll step up to the plate and knock my 15th out. I'll let you know if I do, okay? I'll let you know if I do.
Um, then I just recharge though. It's important to have energy management. You work like a champion, but you've got to know when to step off the court for a second, get some Gatorade, recharge, rest up, and then go back at it. I do this every week. Now, I don't always tank myself as much as I did this week. I tanked myself good. I worked hard, rolled up the sleeves, but that's what we do for our clients. That's what we do to take care of people, serve others, and everything that you're trying to accomplish is going to work out, you guys. I hope this helps. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. You can reach out. My information is in the description. been helping a lot of folks. I'm going to recharge myself so that next week I'm raring to go. Have a good one, you guys.